and of course this will mean less ownership in property and this is already happening it's happening in the US it's happening in Ireland and it's happening all over the world the other day I went down a bit of a rabbit hole on YouTube because a number of people had left comments on my videos claiming a black swan event was about to happen and crash the property market. I'm working on a market update video and some predictions for the future and I wanted to see if it was worth including anything on a black swan event within that video. The market update video will be out in the next 10 days so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. This video is not gonna be about black swan events, but it led me down the rabbit hole to something else that I find actually probably more concerning, more worrying, and is something that is happening right now. What I just tried to do to you there was put some fear into you to keep you engaged and watch to the very end because fear is a good motivator. I did some research and it led me to some worrying conclusions about the housing market that I wanna share with you. I may discuss black swan events in the next video, but today I wanna to talk about something that is actually more concerning and more worrying. More fear to keep you engaged. I do not wanna turn into one of those conspiracy nuts, but what I'm actually seeing is happening right now and people seem happy to roll with it. I came across the term the great reset. It's something I've heard being bandied around for the last year or so, mainly by uh, cr crypto investors who are talking about the greatest uh, transfer of wealth happening. There's a few other uh, entities that use it, but I kind of felt that that wasn't where it came from and I knew there was more to it. The Great Reset has been a term that has been floating around for the last 10 years. However, it came to headlines just over a year ago, mainly because it was the headline tag of the World Economic Forum. Basically, this is a group of high profile politicians and business people that meet once a year, generally speaking in Davos in Switzerland. The focus of the last meeting they had was how to build society after COVID and they rebranded this the Great Reset. The main goal from the World Economic Forum is to create a more centralized uh, power, generally speaking with a very leftist uh, socialist point of view. Does this sound like a forum where the transfer of uh, wealth would be discussed in your favor? The main talking points from the last meeting that was held was that there would be a new economy with that would be a stakeholders economy. It would be resilient, equitable and sustainable. Uh, so there is a lot of positives there. The positives would be that there would be growth. The growth would be focused on green growth, smarter growth and a fairer growth. This would involve investing more heavily in green infrastructure as well as reskilling the workforce with a general focus on solidarity i.e we all work together for the greater good without becoming a full conspiracy nut and putting on my tinfoil hat there are some worrying elements or details within the great reset and one of the main elements it is is that the public will own less but be happier at the same time and it's not quite a conspiracy when the world forum actually documented themselves within their own agenda that openly states the term you will own nothing and you will be happier and i think that's a worrying kind of statement to have in such a document this is clearly happening already in many sectors look at the lockdown unelected government officials had more influence than elected members people's rights were stripped away we're now talking about a global uh, tax treaty which will have an impact on smaller nations and of course, this will mean less ownership in property. And this is already happening. It's happening in the US, it's happening in Ireland, and it's happening all over the world. Prior to 2008, funds were happy to invest in mortgage-backed investments. Governments were happy to invest in banks that provided mortgages. But that's shifted in recent years. Funds want to buy directly into property, and governments want to control the housing market as much as they possibly can. It's now clear that left political parties want to control housing. That's no easy task, but it seems that there's a very clear playbook. Create scarcity in the market, create unaffordability within the market, create a crisis and drive fear, then propose a solution that social and public housing is the only way to fix this problem. See why fear is a good motivator? This is playing out right now in Ireland. Government are buying and renting as much as they possibly can. Sinn Féin are promoting agenda of uh, state housing and that everyone rents from the state. However, most people want the ability to buy their own home and live where they want to live. 
But this crisis has been created by TDs and councillors objecting to every single housing development that they possibly could for the last 10 years. As I've said, fear is a good way to keep you watching and every story needs a villain. In this story, developers and property funds are portrayed as the villains. Villainized property funds and developers are being used as scapegoats so everyone looks the wrong way. When in fact, developers and property funds are the ones who are actually trying to build, but hurdles are being put in their way at every single step. It hasn't just become hard to become a new homeowner. Legislation changes for small private landlords have also made it extremely difficult to be a landlord in Ireland. And the story tells the picture from rental caps, high taxes, as well as making it incredibly difficult to manage your existing tenants is all forcing landlords to leave. You may own your property outright, but the government are determining who you can rent a property to, how long they can stay, as well as what rent you can charge. That combined with a system that makes it incredibly difficult to deal with problem tenants is forcing more and more landlords out of the market. The same is happening in the US. Many states make it very difficult for you to screen your tenants before they take a lease. COVID led to the eviction ban, making it extremely difficult for landlords to run their business. A Forbes article predicted that by 2030, the US government may be the biggest owner and operator of rental units. This has been led by a left agenda that housing is a human right and that housing should be owned by the state. But the only way to successfully achieve this is to actually create a housing crisis first. The parallels to Ireland are very clear. The state already control the largest majority of rental stock through the local authority and HAP. Uh, there's a clear uh, leftist social agenda that public housing is the only way to solve the problem and developers and property funds are the villains. A crisis and fear had to be created by the lack of supply. So people would buy into the idea that the only way to solve the problem is through social housing and they would give up on their dream of owning one day, i.e. you will own nothing and be happy by 2030. Right now, the Irish state are the biggest competitor to private buyers and private renters. And the state continues to buy and rent more and more units which further limits the amount of supply for the private market. Again, every story needs a villain. Property funds and REITs are the perfect villain, yet they only hold a fraction of the housing stock. I'm not saying social or public housing is a bad thing. I 100% agree that it should be provided for the less well-off. However, when 40 to 50% of all new stock coming onto the market in Ireland is swallowed up for social housing, that is going to lead to problems for the general public in terms of higher prices and limited supply. States and countries that have a liberal planning system and allow development do not suffer from housing crises. The villains are not the developers and the, and the property funds. And in this story, I'm casting the villain as TDs and the councillors who have continually objected and blocked housing development for the last 10 years and creating this housing crisis. Because they needed the crisis and the unaffordability of houses right now to ensure that it brought about the idea that state housing was the only solution. Give this video a like, make sure you hit that subscribe button, check out the playlist for more content. I'm Shane Fleming and I promise you, I will not be wearing a tinfoil hat next time you see me.